Praise the Lord, everyone. My name is Mario. I am an apostolic Pentecostal. And if you're joining my channel for the first time, welcome. I've missed your face. Even though we haven't properly introduced each other, I still want to know who you are. And your name is? Hey, nice to meet you. You seem like a cool cat. If you have navigated your way to my channel, you have come just in time for the Daily Mop, which makes you a mop head. <laughs> Now today's format's gonna be a little bit different because I wanted to talk about a certain YouTube comment that I discovered while I was going through my YouTube notifications the other day. A couple days ago, I was uh, looking up Christian testimonies and I left a comment on a certain video. And so of course I typed my little comment and I got a response saying from that YouTube user that baptism in Jesus name was not necessary for salvation. And she questioned if I indeed was apostolic, which I found really funny because the fact that I mentioned baptism was necessary for salvation, she connected that to being an apostolic, which is like a win for us. So I kind of want to just tell a little bit of my story of how I was introduced to an apostolic church. Uh, the first apostolic church I ever went to was uh, First Apostolic Church of Maryville. And I remember leaving that service with three things in mind. One, everyone was dressed really freaking nice. Two, everyone was genuinely happy and I wanted what they had. And three, what in the world is Acts 2.38? For the majority time I was in a church, everyone knew and everyone said one verse, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Well, I heard that exact same passion for that verse, except for Acts 2.38 in the apostolic apostolic church and I kept wondering what is this verse? How come I've never even heard of it? So with this video, I wanna give you three facts on why we believe baptism in Jesus' name is necessary. Fact number one, Matthew 28, 16, Jesus went with 11 disciples to the mountain and ordained all 11 of his disciples, meaning he gave them all power, all authority, and all right to exercise his work when he would eventually go away. Two, in Matthew 28, 19, they were instructed to go out into the nations and baptize them in name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. In fact, number three, when Peter was preaching the first sermon and Peter said in Acts 2.38, repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The fact is 11 men were appointed to go out and do Jesus's work. The fact is they were instructed to baptize all the nations in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. In fact, the very first baptisms we find was in Acts 2.38 and 3,000 people were baptized in the name of Jesus. So the reason why we don't baptize people in the name of the Father and in the Son and of the Holy Ghost because Jesus is the Father. Jesus is the Son. Jesus is the Holy Ghost. The reason you don't find the very first baptism of the New Testament church weren't done in the name of Jesus and in the name of Jesus and in the name of Jesus because the disciples knew that Jesus was the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. As a matter of fact, we find throughout the book of Acts that every baptism that took place happened in the name of Jesus. Jesus. And the fact is, why in the world would Jesus instruct them? I mean, you can go look yourself, look in a red letter edition, any Bible, any version, and you'll see that Jesus said unto them in Matthew 20, 19, to do this particular thing. And so what did they do when Jesus left? They did that particular thing, baptizing them in the name of Jesus. All I know is if Jesus said to do it, to do it. So baptism is not not just an optional thing, it is necessary for salvation. If you don't believe me there, let's look at the words that Jesus said in Mark 16, 16. Those who believe and are baptized shall be saved. Hmm. You can't sit there and tell me baptism is just an optional thing or it's a profession of faith. Jesus never did that. The apostles never did that. You don't find a, a baptism for a profession of faith. That's just some man-made ideology thing. The fact is you must be born again of the water and of the spirit. The fact is you must be baptized in the name of Jesus because every baptism in the Bible happened in the name of Jesus. It never happened in the name of the Father. 
Father or the Son and of the Holy Ghost. If we want to see Jesus at the end of our lifetime in heaven, we must do these particular things. It's so simple. And when you all get the clarity and you understand it and you see it in the Bible, my goodness, your eyes will be opened up. I remember thinking for 20 years I was robbed because I didn't know it. But the truth is I wasn't robbed. There are just confused churches out there that we've got to go out as apostolic Pentecostals and teach them the truth to untwist what the devil is trying to do in our church and is trying to twist and is trying to tell people they don't have to do a certain thing, but we must do this. Go out if you have not been baptized in Jesus' name. Find an apostolic Pentecostal church in your area. Links are down below in the description and go find a preacher that will baptize you in the name of Jesus and you are securing yourself in heaven that your soul will be written in the book of life. Thank you all so much. I hope you receive this message with kindness and in love. Uh, before you leave, do three things for me. One, like this video. Two, comment down below. I want you to tell me what you think and what you believe. Three, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you know when I upload the next video. Thank you all so much. My name is Brother Mario. God bless you.